can Japan return to growth, sustainable growth? It's a question everyone's asking only a month or two after the new government and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe have been introducing new, more aggressive fiscal policies and a reform of the monetary framework in Japan. Julian Jessop, who's the chief global economist at Capital Economics, is with me today to discuss whether markets are right to be excited or whether maybe there is less here than meets the eye. Mm. Julian, welcome to Author's Note. First, could, I, could you just explain to us what Abenomics really means? Well, at face value, it certainly sounds very encouraging. There are basically three components to it. The first is some fresh fiscal stimulus, a mix of relatively easy things to do, like public spending increases and a few tax cuts, but also some more structural reforms. The second element is the reform of the policy framework at the Bank of Japan, including a new higher inflation target and the promise of additional asset purchases to achieve that. And the third element is a greater enthusiasm for a weaker yen, which has probably been the main factor why the Japanese equity market has outperformed its peers over the last few weeks. So you would think that they are pulling all the levers, pushing all the buttons, but let's go into mm. some of those things in a bit more detail. Let's start with the fiscal stimulus. We have a chart here that shows us how fiscal balances have uh, changed in the leading uh, G7 countries over the last couple of years. Can you tell us what we learned from this mm. in Japan's case? Well, this is the cyclically adjusted budget deficit. So it corrects for the effects of uh, the economic cycle. Right. And what it basically shows right down at the bottom is that Japan has already seen the biggest deterioration in its cyclically adjusted budget balance of any of the G7 economies. In other so words, this is between 2007 and 2012. Exactly. The red one is 2007. The blue one is, is last year. Exactly. So in other words, there's already been a massive fiscal stimulus in Japan. After all, the debt GDP numbers in Japan are truly frightening. So it's arguable whether additional fiscal stimulus will actually be anything new or provide any additional boost over and above what we've already seen. So you're saying that if we look at this, it's a 7%, 7 percentage point swing, is that right, in the structural fiscal balance from minus 2 to minus 9. Now, if that's already happened in the last five mm. years and hasn't had that much effect, we shouldn't put too much hope in further fiscal stimulus. Exactly. And the bulk of the fiscal stimulus is more of the same in terms right. of public work spending and popular projects, including social welfare spending, education and so on. There's nothing really new in it. What about monetary policy then? Mm. This is a real change, isn't it? Well, this is potentially more promising. In particular, the, the increase in the inflation target from 1% to, to 2% does suggest that the Bank of Japan is going to be much more aggressive in monetary policy. Let's, look at, let's look at a target. chart of how the mm. inflation rate has developed uh, mm. over the last 15, 20 years. What do we mm. see here? Well, as you can see, the, the headline number, the, the red, the line, red line, has only been 2% or more on two occasions. One was in 1997, the 90s, yep. when the consumption tax was hiked. And the other was more recently in 2008, when global food and energy prices right. shot up. Um, if you look at the blue line, that's been pretty subdued throughout this period, and that's the measure that the Bank of Japan targets. In other words, the Bank of Japan has barely even managed to achieve positive inflation, let alone a number of 1% or 2% over the last 20 odd years. That's right, because we see these, especially the green and blue lines, they basically sit between 0 and minus 1 for this whole almost two decade mm -hmm. period. But can't we attribute uh, that to the fact that they haven't actually targeted higher inflation? Why shouldn't this change now that they are actually putting in an explicit 2% target? Well, most of the time they have actually had an inflation target of somewhere between 0 and 2%. Right. Um, arguably they've not done enough, but throughout this period they've been aggressively buying assets in the markets in the same way that the Fed has in the, in the US or the Bank of England in, uh, has been in the UK. Uh, they've been consistently talking about the need to get inflation positive again. So arguably the difference between missing a 1% target and potentially missing 1% or 2% isn't going to be that great. So you're pessimistic on the effect of fiscal policy, you're pessimistic on the effect of monetary policy. Well, is there anything that Japan can do to return to stronger, more sustained growth? Well, they're certainly talking about the right things, but mm. what I think they need to do is much more of each of the things they have been talking about. I think they need to make the difficult decisions on fiscal policy, the sort of painful structural reforms that would de deliver long-term benefits rebalancing the corporate tax burden, for example, making consumers pay a bit more instead. In terms of monetary policy, they undoubtedly need to buy a lot more assets mm -hmm. over the next few years. But there are doubts about whether they're willing to do so because of the risk of financial bubbles as a result of that. And on the currency, they probably do need to see the currency fall. But ultimately, of course, it's not just Japan's decision. That depends a lot on what happens in the rest of the world. And in particular, the prospect of a revival of safe haven demand for the yen could right. send it higher again. So that's a tall order. It seems like we do have... Uh, 
some reason to be pessimistic that what's been done so far is enough. Time will tell if they will do more. Julian, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us. And thanks to all of you for watching Author's Note.